All right, so let's talk about genetic material. All right, now we're getting nitty gritty. Right? We talked about the chromosomes versus chromatin, the chromi uh, and the chromatids, and so forth. Chromosomes, okay, this is a map of view. We have 46 chromosomes in every non sex cell. Non sex cells are also referred to as somatic cells. You've got 23 chromosomes that you got from mom and 23 chromosomes you got from dad making 46. The gametes are the sex cells. The sperm is a gamete, the egg is the gamete. But there's only 23 chromosomes in one sperm and there's only 23 chromosomes in one egg. But when they unite, you've got the 46. When it unites, it's known as a zygote, at least for the first four days, okay? A gamete contains half the number of chromosomes that you would find in a non-sex cell. If it's a full set, as in a non-sex cell, they would have 46 chromosomes, and we refer to that as a diploid. But if they have half the number of chromosomes, as in an egg or a sperm, we refer to it as a haploid, and they only have 23 chromosomes. All right? A gamete is an egg. It's a sperm, okay? Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, holds together each chromosome. Everybody in this room, everybody on this earth has the same DNA. Huh? Yeah, they do. You have to have the same DNA. If you've got a different DNA, then you're a pig or you're a bat or plant, right? You all have the same DNA. So then what makes everybody different? Okay. What's happening here is this. You all have the same textbook. You all have the same chromosomes. You, everybody in here has the chromosome for blue eye color, red eye color, blue eye color, brown eye color, green eye color. You all have the chromosomes for that. It's like you have your own textbook. Everybody has the same information in all your textbooks. But at the end of the semester, I look at every book, it's going to look different. Why? Because certain people are highlighting this word, some people are highlighting this word, some people are highlighting this word. So what's happening with DNA is that some people have their blue eye color highlighted. Some people have the brown eye color highlighted. You see what I'm saying? Everybody has the same DNA. It's just that certain ones have certain highlights on them. That's what makes us different from each other. We call these blue eye color, red eye color, that kind of stuff, those are genes. Okay? Yes, when we compare ourselves with the closest thing to a human, the chimpanzee is the closest. How much closer? Well, we're only 2% different in DNA with a chimpanzee. 2%, and yet look at the difference between us. Okay? The next one, I believe, is an orangutan, and believe it or not, the next one after that is a pig. Okay? What I'm saying is 2% is a whole lot of you know, of a window, a big window when you deal with this. So we are 98% chimp. <laughs> okay? All right, so a gene is a trait, as I just explained to you. A certain segment of DNA that makes a protein for a certain eye color, hair eye color, that kind, of, or hair, hair color, eye color, okay? So it determines that thing. It also makes it um, you may have a gene, I'm using just those things that you can see, but it also, you might have the gene for, let's say, diabetes. You might have the gene for Alzheimer's disease, that kind of thing also. So it also tells you if you're susceptible of getting certain diseases. When you put all of it together, the whole, all the, gene, the genes where they are, it's the map, we call it the genome. The genome is this whole map. And it took about... 
10 or 15 years, you probably even longer than that, to, to map out where everything is. In other words, you have 46 volumes of chromosomes up there, encyclopedia said. The genome, it took 15 years or so to figure out blue eye color is on page 64 in volume 23. So they mapped out, they know where everything is at this point. All right, and it took a long time to do that. All right, 2% of DNA is genes. 98% really is not going to code for anything, okay? It just plays in roles of chromosome structure. Some junk DNA has no function at all. So 98%, well, let's put it this way. If you get an encyclopedia set and you weigh it, it's pretty darn heavy. But when you really think about it, the weight is the paper, is the binding, the string in the binding, the ink, but not the actual words, the theory. Do you see what I'm saying? When you actually weigh the theory, the thoughts, it's gonna be so small. Everything else, it has to be put on paper so you can read it though. Does that make sense? So that's why it's so small on there. 98%, it's really just structure-wise. Or we still haven't figured out what it does. It really doesn't do anything at all, okay? This is what it looks like. It's got, well, it looks like that. Okay. I try to come up with some theme, usually, for the ties. But what it is is that it's a, it's a ladder that's twisted on itself. Okay? We call it a double helix, a spiral ladder. Okay? Heredity, a trait or a gene that's passed down from one person to another. Okay? A gene or chromosome could be mutated in the process of this is happening. Whether someone uh, gets an infection, certain uh, viruses can actually mutate the DNA, cause cancer, certain cigarettes. Things can happen. Rays from the sun can change things. You've seen the Incredible Hulk and what caused that whole thing too. Okay? The disease, DZ is disease, may not appear at birth, but may occur later on in life, like Parkinson's, right? So genetic abnormalities could be anything like sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, Down syndrome, and so forth, diabetes, and things like this. And this helps out. If you know you carry the gene for this, then it's gonna help out should you, you know, if my father's got diabetes, my mother's got diabetes, I don't have diabetes, but it is gonna change the way that I'm going to eat, or should, right? Maybe I'll still get diabetes, but instead of it happening at 40 years old, I might get it at 55 years old, and I bought myself another 15 years because I changed the way that my diet is, because I know the way my genetics are in my family. So it could educate you in that way too. All right, so now let's talk about the chromosome structure, okay? DNA, as I explained to you, could be loose, and that's why I did. You rip out all the pages in the encyclopedia set and lay it down on the floor over here. That's chromatin. And in most cases, that's what you're going to see it as. And you can't really see it because it's really thin. Chromatin is very thin, but it's scattered, and you can actually see everything. When it's tightly coiled... Then we're putting it back in books on the shelf. And the only time you'll want to see that is when you're ready to divide with mitosis. How it does that is kind of wraps around what we call these proteins called histones. And the histones are right here. They kind of, this is the DNA, turns into chromatin, and when it starts wrapping around these histones, it starts developing into this thing here. This is called a chromosome. And a chromosome, uh, a chromatin is DNA loosely coiled, but a chromosome is made up of two chromatids. So you're going to have a chromosome here, okay? This is one arm of a chromosome. Then you've got a centromere here kind of tie something together, and then you're going to have maybe a longer arm over here. That's a chromosome, but you'll have pairs of chromosomes. There'll be another one over here, like this. 
Well, actually, what this is is this is a chromatid. This is a chromatid, and that makes up a chromosome. Does that make sense? All right. Most people like to draw it like this. The only thing bad about this is because that's not one chromosome or one one chromatid. It's it's really this is a chromatid and this is a chromatid. It's not this and that, although that's probably what you want to draw in your in your notebook. And that's fine, as long as you understand the concept of that. Okay? Make sense? Over here? Right? Okay. Alright, so that's what that is. So the chromatids will do that. Alright? And the centromere is in the middle that kind of holds those pairs together. All right, right in here. All right, so the double helix of the DNA. All right, now let's get into this, what it kind of sh is shaped like. Um, Now, some of these words on here um, refers to my chemistry lecture, but I'm going to make it, um, so I'm going to stress on that in here, all right? But you'll understand what these things are, what a phosphate is, what a base is, a sugar, what a nucleotide is. Basically, this is how it's made. A nucleotide is made up of three things, okay? It's made up of a, a sugar, bound together by something called a covalent bond, which is a very strong bond, and that's going to attach itself to a phosphate. Then the sugar will also be bound to something called a base. And it's a nitrogen base. It has a nitrogen on it. Okay? That's a nucleotide. A sugar, a carbohydrate, same thing. A phosphate. In this case, this would be a base. It's one nucleotide. That's not what DNA is. DNA. chain of nucleotides. That's really only one one side though. Okay? That's really what RNA is. RNA is just one strand. DNA is having two strands, meaning we're going to have another one over here. It's a ladder. And you take this ladder and twist it, that's what we call a double helix. If one side was just going to be twisted, that's a helix. One strand that's going to get twisted on its side. But we have another one over here. So we call it a double helix. Helix means twisted. 
It always goes sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, and we got thousands of them going all the way down. A nucleic acid is nucleotides, a chain of nucleotides. So ribonucleic acid, RNA, is a chain of nucleic acids. DNA is a chain of nucleic acids, but two chains that are tied together. Okay? The bonds over here are strong bonds. These are covalent bonds in black here. Very difficult to break them. But we do have bonds in between bases here. These are hydrogen bonds. And when you get through my chemistry lecture, you'll learn that hydrogen bonds are very weak. We can easily break those, and we'll want to do that. The rungs here, where you're putting your feet on them, are based on bases. So the backbone is made up of sugar. The sugar we're talking about is deoxyribose. If it ends with OSC, it's a sugar or carbohydrate. If it ends with ASC, it's an enzyme. All right, sucrase, lactase. But then you have lacto lactose and sucrose. Those are sugars or carbohydrates. The rungs are made up of one of four different bases. In DNA, we have the bases could be adenine, thymine, cytosine, or guanine, and they fit like a lock and key. Adenine will always go with thymine. Guanine, um, guanine will always go with cytosine. Pretty easy to know. The curved letters of C and G work together, and just think of the mnemonic act. That's pretty easy. Okay. In DNA, it does that. So adenine always binds with thymine, cytosine always binds with guanine. These are bound together by hydrogen bonds. There are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine. There are three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine. The bases have different structures. Adenine and guanine are two ring structures. They have two rings, and I'll show you what they look like in a moment. They're known as purines. Cytosine and thymine are one wing ring structures, and they're known as pyrimidines. The way I memorize it is take out your atomic guns. All right, atomic guns, A, G, atomic guns, is adenine and guanine. And there's two of them, double ring, okay? And gun has a U in it, so it's going to be the purine, not the pyrimidine. Ooh, it took me a while to figure out that part, okay? So it looks very busy on here, but that's why I want to keep on showing you that come up with mnemonics. As you come up with your own mnemonic, you're studying this material because you're trying to see how am I going to fit this in. All right, I got to know like purines going in, purines. How am I going to get purines going into adenine and guanine? As you're saying to yourself, you're studying and you don't realize it. Okay. So again, it's just showing you over here. This is one side, and here's kind of like what I drew over over there. And uh, you can see that A goes with T, G goes with C, and you got this twist thing going on. This one's nice over here. You can see the nucleotide here, but it's a long chain of nucleotides. You can also see here that cytosine goes with guanine. You can also appreciate that guanine is two rings, cytosine is one ring. Adenine is two rings, thymine is one ring. Going from adenine and thymine, there's two hydrogen bonds there, and guanine is Guanine and cytosine, there's three hydrogen bonds there. That's a purine, guanine, that's a pyrimidine, cytosine. Okay, a lot there, it's just a lot of memorization, structure wise. Okay? RNA, one nucleotide chain. When you see two here, it's DNA. 
but RNA is just, you know, it has a nucleotide, but it's a long chain of nucleotides as much as you saw this. But there's a few differences between RNA and DNA. One, obviously, is that, like I said, one, one chain as opposed to two chains. RNA is one chain. The nucleotide in RNA does have, that's what makes it a nucleotide, it does have a sugar or carbohydrate, a phosphate, and a base. But the sugar is different. Instead of sugar in, like in DNA, it's deoxyribose. This one is ribose. Deoxyribose is taking ribose and taking away one of its oxygens. That's why it's called deoxyribose. But in ribose, it has its extra oxygen. The other difference is there is no thiamine in RNA. Instead, it's replaced with uracil. So this means that uracil is going to bind with adenine when we deal with RNA. There is no thiamine in here. And uracil is a pyrimidine also, a one ring structure. So these are what they kind of look like. You sure you know how to draw these? They may be asked on an exam. Not on my exams, but in the future. Thank God, right? So I'm not going to ask you about that. It's a joke. I'm not going to ask you about how to structure. If you like biochemistry, you like this, you'll learn how this is. But it's just showing you here's two rings. So adenine and guanine are two rings, whereas cytosine, thiamine, and uracil are all one ring structures. So besides knowing the, the, the one ring or two rings, that's all I want you to know in the structure wise. There's three types of RNA. There's messenger RNA. A messenger RNA, known as mRNA, is a mirror image of a gene. We'll talk about this when we get into transcription. It's going to make a mirror image of something from DNA. And it's going to go from the nucleus, where the DNA is, and made a copy of it, and it's going to go outside in the cytoplasm, and it's going to find a ribosome and start making uh, a protein with the help of transfer RNA. tRNA, or transfer RNA, is going to have an amino acid attached to it and bring it onto the messenger RNA where it is at the ribosome and it's going to make a long chain with this amino acid another tRNA is going to come there another tRNA and it's going to make the amino acids bind to each other just the way a Lego set would be putting more Legos on there making this really long. You also have ribosomal RNA that's created by the nucleolus and this is what's going to make the ribosomes those two subunits to make a ribosome making that clam that's what's going to happen with that.